As far as how to access the case files, that's not really my area of expertise. But you can ask Hal. Oh crap, alright. How how do I do it? Funny, I was just working on this very thing. So, it looks like I can't give you direct access to the files, but, dot dot dot, I found a bug in the chat. You should be able to inject a query that'll get you in. Just type this. Oh, you have got to be f kidding. Forming the duties of his office. Of Digby C. Caesar. No. Well, hey everybody. Thanks for stopping by. I am Digby, and today we're going to be checking out the full version of the game The Operator. Now, hopefully you guys remember that about a month ago we played the demo on the channel, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, this is that game that, and I'm going to put it in air quotes, was inspired by the X-Files. Oh, and interestingly, when I started it up, I actually had a continue option. So I don't know if it's going to pick up where the demo left off. I mean, that's kind of the hope. But I suppose if it doesn't, I'm really not going to be all that heartbroken because I did have a really good time with the demo too. So replaying it, not going to be a huge chore. But either way, we are ready to go be a grunt in the X-Files office and hopefully discover the truth. Okay, now, I think we have to log in. If I remember correctly, it doesn't matter what I type. It's going to come up as Evan Tanner. Okay, so what is my password? Clown sex, really. Okay. Alright, it does look like we are picking up where we left off. Although Xavier Skinner has definitely changed from how I remember him. Alright, what's up, boss? Operator Tanner, are you there? Agent Walker told me that your connection was suddenly cut. And when I tried to contact you, you were offline. What happened? Uh, okay, somebody named Hal hacked my terminal. Uh, Hal is this hacker guy that's trying to help us get to the truth or something. At least, I'm pretty sure that's what happened in the demo. Hal? I thought we had taken care of that problem. I will look into this matter immediately with our cybersecurity department. The second shift of operators has arrived. You can go home now, Tanner. See you tomorrow. And don't be late. Okay, see you tomorrow, boss. Oh, hang on. I have to actually turn my computer off manually. Okay. Okay, apparently I have to log back in again. And... Clown sex. Are you gonna call me, boss? Yes, I had a feeling you were gonna call me. Oh, it's Mike Trench, my buddy. Hello, Mike. Hey, pal. So, tell me, how day number one at the FDI go? Everything you had hoped for? Uh, it was pretty exciting. Uh, I don't actually know if Skinner likes me or not, but I tell you what, overall, things went pretty well. All right. That's what I like to hear. Ah, sorry, buddy. My phone's ringing off the hook here. I gotta run. But hey, great job. And uh, just, just keep plugging away, okay? I'm proud of you, Evan. Of course, Director Trench. Oh, actually, he's my buddy. You know what? Thanks, Mike. I'll talk to you later. There's the boss. Hello, boss man. What do you got for me? Operator Tanner, Agent Pendle has an update on yesterday's case. I'll patch her through in a moment. But before I do, I wanted to let you know that from this point on, you'll talk to the agents directly. Time to cut the umbilical cord. However, as your supervisor, I'll still be in the background monitoring your activity. 
Oh, I almost forgot. Our cybersecurity department is looking into this unfortunate matter with Hal. You can be assured that it won't happen again. Okay, we'll catch Hal, won't we? Of course we will, Operator. This is the FDI. <laughs> that does not fill me with the degree of confidence that you think it does. Alright, now if I remember right, Pendel was the one we had to solve the murder at the bar. Good morning, Operator Tanner. So you remember Ray Wells, right? Of course I remember. So I checked out the address you gave me, but no sign of Wells. Then I get a call from Vice and guess what? Wells was found dead in a downtown parking garage early this morning. Shot. Point blank range. Now I'm working two homicides and it's my first week. Welcome to the FDI, Alexandra. Anyway, the garage has cameras and I got some footage of Wells. That's the good news. The bad news? I don't have all the footage. Sort of weird, but part of it is missing. Okay. Was it tampered with? I don't know. Looks that way, doesn't it? I don't put much stock into conspiracies, but the timing is definitely suspicious. Anyway, think you could take a look. I'm looking for anything that's different between the first and second half of the surveillance footage. Apart from Wells ending up dead and the blood splatter on the pillar. Sorry for the vivid details. No, I tell you what, honey, this is the X-Files. You've got to believe in conspiracy theories. Okay, find something different in the parking. Now, really quick, I wanted to check and see. Okay, the Tanner Bar, we had the criminal. That should be the Wells guy, right? License plate is CPL41. I think this was the Wells guy that actually came in here and did the shooting. It should be any second now. Yeah, the car pulled up, guy came in, shot him, and then sawed it off. And I'm reasonably certain we ran the license plate, and that turned out to belong to Ray Wells. Okay, so that's where we left off. And then Ray Wells took his little Toyota to a parking garage, and apparently got shot in the back of the head. Alright, let's uh, have a look at the parking cam and see what we can come up with. And there's the Toyota right there. I think, or it might be that one over there. Okay, well, he's leaning up against the thing. And then we come back, and... What's missing? Okay... I didn't actually notice anything, you know, immediately on first viewing. Let's try pausing it. Let's have a look at this car here, if we can. Was that one? No? Okay, can't look at either one of those. So we've got basically these two cars. Is there any way I can actually pull up a second copy of this footage? So I can put them side by side? No, game says I cannot do that. Okay, that's fine. I can actually just do the skimming bit. So we start here. Afterwards, what's changed? We've got... Okay, car back there, thing going on, three cones, a couple of cars, those two there. It looked like all of that was still... Yeah, that actually looks pretty much the same. Okay, so what can we, uh... What can we click on in this scene and do things with? Oh, hold on, don't I have a thing of tools here somewhere? Is it my document spot, right? No. Yeah, I should have a thing with tools on it that we can use to examine this. Hopefully I'm not being timed. Okay, it's not in the cases, Warren. And Pen uh, Agent Pendel, thank you, and Agent Walker, that's what you were trying to say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had a tools thing at one point. Well, I tell you what, hold that thought. Let me actually go rewatch my original video for a couple of seconds and see if I can figure out exactly how it is we're meant to analyze this footage. So yeah, hold that thought, I'll be right back. Okay, found it. It was the applications folder here is what I was thinking of. Oh, hold on though, that's not the... Uh... Yeah, that's not the thing that actually uses the tools. I'm pretty sure, if I remember right though, all we had to do was like click on the screen, correct? Alright, yeah, this is just how like we find people and license plate numbers and stuff. Alright, so it's not letting me look at that. Oh, okay, so I can click on the dude. 
Although she did tell me she didn't care about that. Yeah, we know that's Ray Wells. Okay, so is there anything else on here I can click on? Okay, so not the car, not the thing. Well, you did say something about the blood splatter. Can I click on that? I cannot. It's just going to make me keep clicking on Ray Wells. Okay, so here's a thought. I don't know if any of you guys will remember it or not, but at one point in a video, once upon a time, I mentioned that I can actually cross my eyes in the opposite direction, which means I can basically look at two pictures side by side, and then cross my eyes a little bit funny and see them one on top of the other, and differences are absolutely painfully obvious when you do that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one over here, and I'm going to take a screenshot of it, kind of like that, and I'm going to put the later version of the video over here, and I'm going to take a screenshot of that, and then I'm going to pause the game again, I'm going to go look at those two pictures one on top of the other, and with any luck, I'll see what I need to see. Alright, well, I got a little bit of a headache out of the deal, but I tell you what, the difference is something to do with this light right there. Okay, the light is on at the beginning of the video, but it's off at the end. Yes. Now, how does that help me? Okay, I'm starting to think maybe I should have just actually replayed from the beginning, but that's fine. I did figure it out. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go to here, and then click on that. There we go. Okay, we got it. Now, the light is off in the second part. Look at that. Give me a sec, operator. I'm going to check this out. Well, well, well. I just found a bullet lodged in the light's framework. I'm sending you a photo. Okay. I don't need this up anymore. Can you run an analysis and tell me what kind of bullet I'm looking at? I would absolutely love to. Alright, this is the bullet found in the light. So we have to scan it first. 45 ACP. Here you go. It's a 45. 45 caliber? I believe that's what the military and police use. Well, that's something anyway. Thanks for your help, operator. Appreciate it. If only we had all of the footage. Anyway, I should get back to the scene. Keep digging, and see if you can find anything else about our perp. Okay, find out more about the killer. Hmm. Not sure how I'm meant to do that, but... Oh, hold that thought. Hello, Hal. Oh, could you please just leave me alone, Hal? Hey, that stings. I thought you and I were becoming friends. Uh, nope. Look, I have a deal to offer you. One that I think you'll find interesting. Okay. Well, I tell you what, what do you mean? You see, we share a common goal. You, me, and the FBI. You just don't know it yet. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'll help you with the Wells case. But, you have to help me later when I ask for it. Do we have ourselves a deal? We absolutely do not. I do not want to uh, go into debt to you. Hey, why would I help a criminal? Because, as I already said, we share a goal. And because, without my help, you and Agent Pendel will never solve this case. Wells Killer will still be on the loose. And, sadly, you'll never climb the ranks of the FDI. Well, I tell you what, I can't do anything illegal, dude. You won't be. Oh, God. I'm not going to have a choice, am I? I'm going to have to do this. I mean, apart from working with me, the world's most wanted hacker. Well, look, how would you help me exactly? I have access to the surveillance footage from the garage. Uncut. I'm waiting. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean all of the footage. Okay. I mean, I'm kind of curious to know, how did you get it? I don't have time to go into the technical details. No offense. But you probably wouldn't understand. I love that he made a little bit of a typo and back fixed it. <laughs> Will you do the deal or won't you? I need your answer. 
and I need it now. Well, the answer is no. I don't want to do it. It won't let me type no. It's going to make me do it. Okay, apparently I'm going to be indebted to hell whether I like it or not. She could use my help. Yes, yes she could. And you could be her knight in shining armor, Evan. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put this big juicy missing part back in so you can watch it and solve this crime. I'll help you if... dot dot dot... you help me. Uh, okay, well this looks suspicious. I mean, I would suddenly be very suspicious of me if I instantly had access to footage that she didn't. If somebody asks how you got the missing footage, just say the analysis software restored it. It's supposed to be cutting edge anyway, right? So do we have ourselves a deal? Uh, you know what? No, I'm not doing it. Say, we have a deal, Hal. Okay, apparently I, again, have no choice. Whatever. I need you to say it, Evan. I don't want to say it, Hal. Give me a few seconds to run my script. Starting Demon on port 666. <laughs> Injecting source code, starting... Okay, so he's now hacked his way into my computer and thereby the FDI. Brilliant. Okay, file patch, everything's done. Okay, the missing footage has been magically restored. I hope you have your popcorn ready. I'll be back a little later to collect my debt, Evan. Until then, wait for it. Okay, was that it? Alright, so find more info on the killer. That means we have to look at the parking garage footage again. Oh, hold that thought. I have to do it this way. Yeah, there we go. Alright, we want to look at the actual full footage. And now we should have the middle bit so we can see what's going on over here. I have a feeling somebody's going to walk out, shoot him in the back of the head, and go away. Oh, it's a dude in a muscle car. Okay, so hold on. He actually pulled up next to him for a second. He was there for a while. So yeah, he pulled up. And Wells actually went over to the car. They were talking there for a second. Then he drove off. So we can get an ID on the killer, maybe? Alright, who are you, my dude? I see that you ran the facial recognition software, and zero matches turned up, operator. That's... unusual. In fact, it shouldn't even be possible. Our FDI databases are exhaustive. I'll flag this issue for later. But go ahead and share the image with Agent Pendle. Oh, I'm going to in a minute. I got one more thing I want to try. I want to see if I can actually get anything on this car as it pulls up. Like, is it possible to get a shot of the license plate or something that I might be able to identify? Okay, what do we got? We're doing the scan. 1991 Red Dodge Charger. Okay, doesn't look like a 91 to me, but I guess so, game. I have an image of the killer. That's all I've got. Wait, I don't understand. How did you get this? Uh, well, I tell you what, Hal might be making me work for him, but he's not going to make me actually cover for him. Hal? The hacker? You're a funny guy, Tanner. Anyway, thanks. I'll canvas the area immediately. Maybe someone has seen our Prince Charming. I'll talk to you later. And thanks again. Don't mention it. Okay, is that the end of the day? FBI headquarters. Washington, what time is it? It is 1.45 p.m., so no, it's not time to go home yet. 
I'm waiting for my phone to ring. Oh, my debt. Crap. Now, about that debt, Evan. Alright, go ahead. I'm listening. Good. Now, I'm going to connect you to another FDI agent. Her name is Catherine Andrews. Just listen to what she has to say. Open your terminal and type the following command. Call 187-222-1998. No secure. Alrighty, let's go to the applications. We'll go to the terminal. Hopefully it's going to do it for me. It is not. Shoot. Alright, well, <laughs> give me a second. I'm actually curious here, before I pull the trigger on this, what happens if I change the last thing to just plain secure? Yeah, make sure I spelled that right. Routing route to the target IP. Unknown parameter zero. Okay, so I am going to have to do this unsecured. There you go, Hal. What do you mean timeout target IP can't be reached? Um. Okay, pal, buddy, you want to uh, tell me why this isn't working? Oh, and here's a thought too, while we're at it, how about we go into the applications, let's go to the human database, and let's look up Catherine Andrews and see if we get any info on her. She's gotta be in here, right? If she's an agent. Aha, she is here. Catherine Andrews, status alive. She's a 40-year-old female. She's 5'9", weighs 143. She's from Chaska, Minnesota. Blood type's O positive. No scars, no aliases. She lives at Bayport Road, Hartwood, Virginia. She's married. She has a license. She's an FDI agent. And there's her fingerprints. Alright, I'm going to keep you open just in case. So, why exactly could I not call the IP? Did I type the wrong number? I did, it's friggin' 89 I put, not 98. Alright, once more with Veelin. Hello, Operator Tanner. Hal told me that you'd be calling. Okay, yeah, I didn't have a choice. Look, I get it. Hal can be a world-class pain. Okay, I'll try to keep this short. About a month ago, I started working on a missing persons case. A woman reported that her husband had been gone for over 48 hours. Almost right away, the case felt... different. Red tape all over the place. An unusual lack of cooperation from my superiors and colleagues. Unanswered calls. Suddenly, the FDI felt like the most incompetent department in the country. After an almost endless game of phone tag, I finally managed to get an appointment with a superior. The plan was to sit down and talk about the case first thing Monday morning. That Sunday night, I'm awoken by a phone call. The woman's apartment has burned to the ground. And the woman, what's left of her anyway, has been found dead in the ashes. Okay, I'm not going to say it could be a coincidence because it's not. Like I said, this is the X-Files. Conspiracy theories are very much the flavor of the week. Alright, you know what? What did you do after that? So, I started looking into the fire, of course. I... I couldn't help myself. Plus, I felt like I owed it to Mia. That was the woman's name. Mia Cole. Anyway, it wasn't long before my superiors found out and pressured me to stop. They told me the fire had been ruled accidental, the result of faulty wiring in her oven. They told me I was wasting my time and precious FDI resources by looking into it, and said if I continued I'd end up pushing papers in a basement somewhere. But that fire, <laughs> Operator Tanner, that fire was no accident. I can feel it. Mia was murdered. I just have to prove it. That's why I'm hoping you can help me. Okay, if you're wondering what I'm laughing at, pushing papers in the basement is pretty much what happened to uh, Mulder. That's where his office is. And I noticed, too, when I was looking back to figure out how to do the car comparison thing, there was a uh, X-Files reference I think I missed in the demo. Uh, no, I don't need the car database. I actually want to look at the bar one. We had the criminal car. And when we looked it up... Yeah, okay, Black Oil Motors. The Black Oil is actually a reference to the X-Files as well. Probably one of many in this game. Now, really quick, we were given another name. 
So we got Catherine Andrews we're talking to, but who is Mia Cole exactly? I don't know if I'm actually meant to be diving this deep into this, but I figured we might as well while we have the uh, resources. And hold on. Okay, Mia Cole, I don't have the clearance to look at her file. Hopefully I don't get flagged for actually uh, trying to look up her file. I'm assuming she was the supervisor. She's now dead because of a house fire. Uh, Alright, you know what? I'm kind of curious why Hal would help you with this. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't really go into that. Not now, anyway. You just have to trust me. Go ahead and search them in the human DB. The husband's name is Sasha. Sasha and Mia Cole. Please. Okay, well, I apparently jumped the gun on that one. I already looked up Mia Cole, and I was told I'm not allowed to look at it. So let's try Sasha then. Okay, he's been completely and utterly redacted, and I don't have the clearance for that either. So yeah, I don't have the clearance for either one of those. Just another coincidence, right? Look, I don't know why, but someone doesn't want us looking into Sasha and Mia Cole. But we have to, Operator Tanner. It's our job. Who's going to do it if we don't? Can you help me find proof Mia's fire wasn't an accident? Okay, well, I tell you what, I might as well. I don't need the terminal open anymore. We don't need HAL open anymore. Uh, okay, how can we access the case files? You'll take a look then? Oh, thank you. As far as how to access the case files, that's not really my area of expertise. But you can ask HAL. Oh, crap. Alright, HAL, how do I do it? Funny, I was just working on this very thing. So, it looks like I can't give you direct access to the files, but, dot dot dot, I found a bug in the chat. You should be able to inject a query that'll get you in. Just type this. Oh, you have got to be f kidding. Thank you, I can actually copy it. Oh, well, I can once I figure out which one of the three over there is the right one. Oh, okay, it's just a quote mark. Yeah, the one at the beginning, so it should be this one, right? Yep, I got it right. Okay, goodbye, Hal. Despite being, well, a thorn in the side, you have to admit, Hal gets results. If you say so, darling. Alright, let's look at your fire. What do we got? We've got summary. Okay, summary is completely useless, it's been mostly redacted, started around 2 a.m., contained by 312, minimal evidence remained at the scene, refer to report number, blah, 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 okay, so if we have to go through that, I will do it later. Then we got the ring, the inscription, Sasha and me is on the inside, can't click on that, and we got the wedding picture. Alright, so I'm really not allowed to see Sasha's face, am I? Okay, what do we got for the ash sample? Okay, welcome to the FDI. FDI most wanted. Chemical analyzer. You have opened a chemical sample. We have automatically given you access to the CL, uh, CSLCA data report application. You can find it with the other applications in the top left. Please review the user manual. <laughs> yeah, like I'm going to read the manual. Alright, CLSCA, whatever. We've got... Okay, can I just click on, it says pH, how do we find the pH in this? Okay, calculate, oh, I have to do this bit here, maybe? CCBT. You know what, I think I'm gonna go look at the manual. Then 10.6. Now, please tell me that's correct. That is correct. I literally went through all of that to find out that the friggin' accelerant was gasoline. Alright, well, prove the fire's not an accident. Tell you what, unless she had gasoline in her kitchen, that fire was deliberate. Okay, there's traces of gasoline in the fire. I knew it. Faulty wiring might... 
you know what. This was no accident. Someone started this fire and killed Mia. But why? Uh, you know what? What are you going to do now? I'm curious. Maybe I'll end up at a desk in a dark basement somewhere, but I'm going to keep digging into this. It, it matters to me. Okay, why is it so important? Oh, no, you know what? How so is a much nicer way to put that. I grew to know her. Mia, I mean. With our line of work, you try not to get emotionally involved. That's what they teach you at the academy, anyway. Almost from the start. And usually, I can turn the switch off. I learned to do that. Feel nothing. Someone killed them. Operator Tamper. Someone killed Mia and her baby. Are you still there? Uh, yep. I was just totally gripped by every second of that. I'm still here. Oh. Anyway, thanks, Operator. Because of you, I finally have proof. Knowing how, well, as much as someone can know how, I have a feeling this won't be the last time you and me work together. Okay, well, you know what? Good luck. Oh, please tell me that's the end of the day. I really just want to go home and have a whole bunch of beer. So, you found evidence proving the fire wasn't an accident. Well done, Evan. Maybe there's hope for you yet. The way the FDI has handled the coal case... It's strange. Don't you think? Uh, I just want to do my job, Hal. But solving cases is doing your job. So is making sure victims get the justice they deserve. Look. I know you probably still don't trust me. Nope, not for a minute. I'm on the FDI's most wanted list. I hacked into your computer. I get it. But tell me something. Why would I bother going to the trouble of working with you, or working with a low-level FDI employee, a.k.a. me, sorry, if I didn't have a good reason? Uh, you know what? I, I was going to say I have literally no idea. I'm assuming it's because you think I'm a pushover. Maybe you're thinking about turning me in to get that reward, but it's too late. You're in too deep. Oh god, now Director Trench wants me. Alright, hi Mike. Operator Tanner, can I have a word? You know what? Sure, Mike, what's up? I see that you've uh, been looking into the database entries for Mia and Sasha Cole. You want to tell me why? Uh... Well, you know what? I'm not going to lie to my buddy. Hal made me do it. I see. I should have guessed Hal might be involved. This low life has been making our lives very difficult lately here at the department. But we're working with our cybersecurity team. We'll catch Hal soon enough. In the meantime, and this is very important, if you hear anything else about the Coles, you come to me right away. Understood? Absolutely, Mike. Would you mind telling me what the big deal is, though? Oh, there's no deal, Evan. It's just highly confidential, classified, <laughs> and way above your pay grade. I'm sure you understand. I understand you managed to do three separate cliches in one single sentence. Well, technically it's three sentences, but you know what I mean. Uh, yep, whatever you say, Mike. I'll talk to you later. Well, if you want to find me, I'll be home drinking. Shouldn't have done that, Evan. Lucky for you, you held up your end of the agreement by looking into the fire. Yeah, you call me lucky, Hal, but I tell you what, I don't feel all that lucky. FDI headquarters, Washington, D.C. Please tell me it's go-home time. Five minutes of five? That sounds like time to punch out to me. Oh, hello, Agent Walker. What can I do for you? So who the hell am I talking to this time? Well, I tell you what, Agent Walker, you're talking to me, but unfortunately, you're not going to be able to complete that conversation until we do another episode, because I am officially out of recording time for the day, and quite frankly, I feel like I've done enough. So yeah, of the two cases we had in the demo, we did manage to get a little bit further on the one involving the guy who got shot in the bar, 
And then, of course, in this one, it turned out that his killer then got shot in a parking garage by somebody else we can't identify. And we also did manage to add a whole new case to it, that being the uh, Ava Cole murder, which apparently we are absolutely not allowed to find out anything about whatsoever. And in fact, now our best friend is cheesed off at us. Ah, okay, this game actually is a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. Which is good, considering the entire thing is probably going to turn out to be a conspiracy anyway. And on that highly suspicious note, as always, I have been Digby. I thank you guys for stopping by. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Operator. And yeah, I hope to see you for the next one.